Hey, it's Mr. Sorensen here, and it's time for our machine of the day. So let's take a trip back to the wood shop back there, and let's look a little more up close and personal at one of the power machines that are in the wood shop here at Royal and how they work. Today, I'm gonna to give you a little bit of a tour for our tool of the day of a table saw. So, there's a giant table here. The table saw is, there's two of them. There's one here in this corner and one over in that corner. The table saw is just this little machine sitting here. The extended table gives us a better ability to hold big sheets of material when we cut them. But today we're gonna to look at this um, tool called the table saw and I'm going to just talk to you a little bit about it, tell you some of the parts that you need to know uh, in order to use it more effectively. So first of all, let me just bring you over here a little closer and show you up close and personal some of the parts that make up a table saw. So on the side of the table saw here, you see some sleds hanging there. And this is a guard that's gonna help us stay out of the saw. If I come down here and look at the front of a table saw, so over here is this handle right here on a table saw to the, generally it's on the left side of a table saw is the tilt adjustment hand wheel, tilt adjustment hand wheel. So you'll have an arrow pointing to this, I think on your um, table saw picture on your uh, printout and you wanna write in tilt adjustment hand wheel. Um, up in the front, somewhere up here, you're gonna have a box that is the on and off switch for the table saw. And a good idea is to get a on and off switch that has a big paddle on it like that because it's much easier for you to turn it off. And this paddle is sitting right at your left knee. This right here is the height adjustment hand wheel. So when I turn this handle, the blade, which is right up here on the top of the table, is going to raise or lower. So as I turn the hand wheel, the blade either goes down or the blade is going to get higher as I turn that. The fence, which is right here, this long thing right here is called a fence. The fence is used to rip material on a table saw. This is another tool that is on a table saw. You, you It doesn't, it's not attached to it, but it's a kneaded tool. That's called a push stick. This little red piece right here around the blade is called a throat plate. And the throat plate keeps all of the debris, it keeps the board that you're cutting and it keeps your hands from going down into where the blade is. So once I take that throat plate out, I can change the blade, but then after the blade is attached, I'm gonna come back, put this in, that's a throat plate. This little thing sticking up here is called a riving knife and a riving knife sits behind the blade. It helps to keep kickbacks from happening. So as I push a piece of wood through the machine, the piece of wood cannot go sideways like that and get thrown back at me. That's a riving knife. On the top of a table saw, you'd have these two um, grooves that you see here. And so these are miter slots, miter slots. Into those grooves goes a miter gauge. The fence is used for ripping, the miter gauge is used for cross cutting. So here's a miter gauge. A miter gauge fits in the slot like that. I would hold my stock securely to the miter gauge and then I would go like that and cross cut the piece of stock using the miter gauge. The riving knife on a table saw can be replaced by this device right here. This is a guard as well. So this guard is going to fit down in there in the place of the riving knife and it also would protect my hands from getting cut. If I wanted to change this riving knife to the guard, I just, there's a quick release lever inside here. I'm going to raise it. I'm going to take the riving knife out and this is called a splitter. It does the similar work that a riving knife does, only uh, a little differently and then I'm going to use that quick release lever to lock my guard in there like that. Then I would cover this back up with my throat plate. And now I'm ready to rip a piece of stock here and the guard is protecting me from getting myself into the blade. 
on our wood shop table saw here at Royal. 95% of the time, we are gonna put the riving knife in there. So at Royal, most of the time, we're just gonna use the riving knife and we're gonna use this guard right here. It does a good job of protecting us, uh, but I can easily get it out of the way and it doesn't require taking stuff in and out of the throw plate. So once again, here's my throw plate. I have a blade in here. This is a rip blade. I have a riving knife that sticks up behind the blade. That's gonna keep the piece of wood from being able to come away from the fence and hit me with a kickback. This is the fence. The fence is not an optional tool. I have to have it. I can't freehand cut on a table saw. So here's my fence. It locks into place with this little handle. And on my fence, I have a push device or push stick so that um, when I make my cut, I can always transition to my push stick to finish the cut, keep my fingers away from the blade. So the first thing I want to do here is set the width from the blade to the fence to the correct width. And up here on the front of the saw is a ruler. So here's another place that I need to measure. I'm going to set this at one and a half inches and I'm going to lock that fence into place. The next thing that I always want to make sure I do is have my push stick handy so that I'm not having to look for it while I'm making my cut. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and raise the blade or lower the blade. The blade should just be about an eighth of an inch taller than the surface of this board. I don't want the blade sticking way up. You can imagine that if I have the blade sticking up like that, um, where it's, it's about two inches taller than my board, <coughs> if my hand got in here for any reason, that blade could cut my fingers completely off. On the other hand, if the blade barely sticks up above the board at all, so an eighth of an inch or less, if my hand accidentally got down in there on top of the board, I may get a cut, but it wouldn't be a, uh, a, a severe cut. I could, with some stitches, I would uh, have my fingers put back and they would be fine. And then the last thing I'm gonna do here is move that guard over. So it makes it almost impossible that my hand could get down in there. Obviously there's always a chance, but by doing my setup this way, it's very unlikely that my hand would ever get down in there and get cut. Now, regardless of all my setup here, I wanna always make sure when I use these power tools that I have my glasses on. So the final thing I'll do here is put those on, then I'm ready to make my cut. Now, when I make my cut on the table saw, I'm gonna do seven steps. I'm gonna start here like this with my fist halfway between the guard and the front of the table, board push tight up against the fence. I'm gonna start pushing, and when I do this, my left foot is forward. When the board gets to the table, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna hold the board with my left hand, and I'm going to turn and put my right foot forward while picking up my push stick and hooking it on my board. Then I'm going to continue to push. Once I've got to that position, I'm gonna to continue to push with my push stick, and I'll push the board all the way through the blade and past. Once the push stick is past the blade, I wanna bring it to the right side of the fence before I bring it back up and set it in its holder. So that's what, the, that's what you're gonna see when I make this cut. So here we go, let's do it live and in person. <laughs> Now when I finish using a table saw like that and I'm ready to walk away, the last thing that the manufacturer asks me to do is lower the blade down. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the handle here at the front, drop the blade down below the surface of the table so that uh, material or somebody's hand can't accidentally be put up there and accidentally get into the spinning blade which is coasting to a stop. One of the problems with all these machines is that once you turn them off, the blades or the belts continue to coast. So I always want to take whatever precautions I can to try to make sure that the, uh, the coasting blade does not get into my hand or into a piece of wood. The next thing I'm going to try here is to remove the guard. And I will show you a cross cut 
on the table saw, a cross cut. So again, what I would do here is I'm gonna raise my blade up so it's just a bit above. The thing I need for a cross cut is my miter, miter gauge. And I'm going to set it up like that. Right now with a miter gauge, if I turn that handle, I can adjust the miter gauge to 45 degrees, right? I can turn that at any angle. There's a protractor right here. Most of the time, I'm just using it at 90. So I'm gonna make a cross cut here using my miter gauge at 90 degrees. <laughs> And cross cutting would look something like that. Now, if I wanted to make multiple pieces like I'm doing here, and I want them to all be the same length, I never use the fence to do that step. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get something called a clearance block. If I wanted to make a cut here where I cut multiple pieces, five pieces all the same length, I would never pull my fence over and use it as the stop. That makes the little piece that gets cut off wedged in between the fence and the blade and it becomes a dangerous projectile that could get launched off of the saw. Instead, I'm gonna grab this little handmade or shop made device called a clearance block and I'm gonna clamp it onto my fence like that. Now I can safely use the miter gauge and the fence together. So now I have a piece that I wanna cut. I'm simply going to push the piece against the, the clearance block and cut. Bring it back, push the piece against the clearance block and cut. Okay, and you can see now I can safely use the fence and the miter gauge together. You're Manual will always recommend never use the miter gauge and the fence at the same time because it creates a, this piece if it's wedged between the fence and the blade is very dangerous. So here's a way around that uh, using something called a clearance block. So one last device that's always fun to use with a table saw is known as a sled. The sled fits in these miter slots. The sled allows me to make some pretty nice of nice variety of cuts, uh, usually specialty cuts using my table saw, maybe a dado blade and this sled where I'm able to hold the material. It also allows me to do things like introduce safety guards. Uh, sleds can be dangerous if I'm not careful with them, um, but they also can become very, very much a part of my woodworking. Uh, sleds can be used with 45 degrees, they can make miters, they can make box joints and finger joints. They can just be used to make a really nice straight uh, cross cut right angle uh, on my table saw. Well, I hope you have enjoyed taking a little bit closer look at the table saw today and uh, that you feel like you have a little bit better knowledge about how it's used. When we get back in the classroom, this is definitely the workhorse of the shop. Most of the work that we do on our projects gets done right here. All right, we'll see you next time on our machine of the day.